So I want to show you how to use uh, my AlexNet. So here's an overview of what's going on here. So we haven't actually done a lot of the syntax here, but you don't really need it. Here is what you really need to know on a high level. Here is the definition of the convolutional network. So it starts with convolutional layer, then you have a ReLU, max pool, convolutional layer, and so on. And now you also have the continuation basically. And here you have some dropout layers and mostly just kind of linear layers and ReLUs. Okay. So here's how the computation goes. So forget the self. So X would be the argument that forward gets and you will call forward later on. And here what you're doing is you're saying X is equal to self dot features of X. So what that does is it passes X to this part to self dot features. And basically you pass X through the conv layer, the relu and so on until you get to here. And this is what gets returned. So basically the layer that corresponds, the output of the layer that corresponds to this. So you're saying X is equal to this. And now you're saying X is equal to X view this and then 256 by six by six. So what's this? So you can kind of see where this comes from, but you don't really need to. So this is basically the total number of units in the output of this layer. Okay. And I know that because if you kind of carefully look at all those numbers here, you can figure it out. Or in your case, you don't need to worry about it. It's already there for you. Here, what we're doing is we're saying, okay, so as, as large as the size of X is, right? Uh, basically at zero, so as large as the basically uh, height of X is, that's going to be the first dimension. And then the second dimension is going to be this. So X used to be like this much by 256 by 6 by 6. And now it becomes just a matrix where this is the number of examples. And here in the code, the number of examples is actually one currently. And then this is just the flattened version of the output for each particular example. So here, if you have one example, this would be one, and this would be the size of the output here for just kind of one image being passed through the network. So the size of the output of this layer. Okay. So now you store it back at X again, and now you plug X into the classifier. So the reason we did this is because the linear layer, it doesn't take like images. So this is not even an image, but this is like a 3D 256 by 6 by 6 thing, right? But the linear layer, it just takes a one dimensional thing per image that's in this case, this large, and then the output is going to be this large. So this is why we did this. And in fact, you might like to keep it when you're writing your own code. So finally, you compute the output of the classifier. So what you get here is you store the output of this linear layer into X and you return X. So essentially first compute the features. So the output of some intermediate layer, then reshape that and then into a, a two, into a two dimensional matrix, then pass it through the classifier and that's the output. So here the number of outputs is num classes. So X here is going to be this guy by num classes, right? Because this is the number of images that you pass. In this instance, it would just be one. And then the output here is going to be num classes, so 1000. So essentially, for one image, here x is 1000 numbers that correspond to not exactly the probabilities, but to the logits of the probabilities for each of the 1000 classes in ImageNet. So let's look at this code here. So what I'm doing is I'm first loading AlexNet. So I'm just doing this model.eval that you should keep that. So that makes sure that you're in test mode, meaning you want the outputs rather than train mode, meaning you want to actually kind of pass the training set through the network and then do gradient descent. Okay. So keep that here. I'm reading in an image so you could visualize this image right now, right? So I could show you. So Uh, so this would be my weasel. 
and I can say m show all them sorry plt not m show like this and then if I say plt dot show I'll have my result okay and then I start processing the image. So the reason I'm processing it is just to make sure that I can plug it into AlexNet. So if the image were not kind of 227 by 227 in size, there would be a problem. So I'm kind of massaging a little bit until I get to the point where I'm happy that it's the right size. You don't really need to look at the details here. And also you don't actually need to deal with images that are variable size because you are cropping the faces first, right? So if you're cropping and the faces that you're using are just going to be kind of fixed size, whatever, 64 by 64 or something, right? Uh, so now what I'm doing is subtracting the mean of the image. So now the image is not going to look like an image in, anymore at all. I'm dividing by the max. So now all the values here are between zero and one. And I'm doing this because that's the kind of input that AlexNet requires. And now I'm doing this. So if I do this entire thing, basically what I end up with is image, an image that's of this shape. This is not the usual shape. So this is what Alex, AlexNet wants. Usually when you read it in, it would be like 225 by 225 by three. So here we just use roll axis in order to uh, move the image uh, in order to kind of convert the image array into this shape because that's what AlexNet expects of us. And finally here we can say, okay, so put image into a variable. And now we are ready to apply uh, the model. So we say model dot forward of image V. So remember what happens here is you first compute the features of the image, then you reshape those, and then you pass them into the classifier, you get 1000 numbers back, right? And after you get to 1000 numbers, you apply a softmax function to it. So you get 1000 probabilities here. So most of them are going to be kind of small, which makes sense because you have like 1000 in total, right? So most of them are going to be small, just a few are going to be large. And here what I'm doing, and this you don't really need to do. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm looking up at the uh, actually object names that correspond to the top five probabilities. So here's how I do it. And I can print it out if I wanted to. So that's going to be like that. So you don't need to do this part, right? So what you need to do is you need to look at this forward function and say, okay, so what that does is computes 1000 of those uh, logits of probabilities, right? So instead, what you might do is you might say, well, I want a function that just computes the features, right? So write another function that's kind of analogous to forward and kind of use that for your transfer learning. 